Um, it, it's in uh, Princeton University. Uh, there are two professors who suggested that we tackle global warming as a series of wedges. Each of these wedges is like a triangle. It, um, it's, it's a particular step which, uh, which drives energy efficiency. Um, and in and of itself, it will not, will not save the world. But as you put a number of these wedges together, you land up having a huge impact. And I would suggest to you that right in your hands, absolutely in your, in your businesses, in your relationships, in the contracts that you will sign in the next six months, are some of these wedges. And they are very significant. And the reason I say that is because so much energy in Australia is actually spent or wasted just heating, cooling, and lighting buildings, up to 40% of all the energy in this country. And that's an enormous amount, and it's right in your grasp, in your gift, to sort that out. Now, one of the wedges is carbon sequestration. This is simply putting a cap on top of a power station and capturing all of these gases. It's actually not too difficult. One of the ways you can do it is by uh, using some of the energy from the power station to extract oxygen from the air. So you just feed pure oxygen into the furnace. If you do that, that's a very clever trick because the only thing you can possibly get out then is water and carbon dioxide. So you just condense out the water, collect every molecule of gas, and put it back under the earth. Great. You've got 100% carbon capture. Does it cost a lot? No, it doesn't. Uh, you can do it for a fraction of... Uh, uh, you can probably do it for about a 20% addition to energy costs. That sounds a lot, but actually if you phase that in over, over 20 years, that's a 1% increase in electricity generating costs per year. And you could offset that just by changing a few light bulbs around the place and uh, insulating and a bit of building control. You'd say that more, more, more than that. So what it means is that uh, this technology can capture 90, 95, or even 100% of carbon, potentially, and uh, store it back under the earth. We pump it down as a gas. It liquefies, and it stays in, in under the ground where we can cap it. And just like the original gas that we, we, that we tap, this, this carbon dioxide gas, this liquid gas, we can probably stay uncompressed under the earth for 500 million years. We don't know what the leakage rates are, but it could stay for a very long time. So this is a good wedge. It's an easy one to do. It's a no-brainer, and you're going to see lots of it. 